We'd like to see the press conference for Minister Hayashi. Minister, the floor is yours. Today, I was appointed to the post of uh, the foreign minister. My name is Hayashi Yoshimasa. I used to serve as uh, the uh, defense minister, as well as at the House of Councillors, uh, the Committee Head on Foreign Security Head Affairs, uh, the chairman, as well as at the LDP chairman of the Foreign and Economic uh, uh, the Partnership the Research Council, I had, have had all these opportunities to try to promote exchange with the different countries. It is a great honor for me to be appointed to be the Minister of Foreign Affairs, and I have a strong sense of duty. At the moment in time, the international society is in an epochal change that today. Uh, the universal values and international order which has supported peace and prosperity of the international community is now being challenged, is in a dif difficult situation. And economic uh, the factors are influencing the security situation uh, greatly. Against this backdrop, as Prime Minister Kishida has uh, put forth uh, the trust and confidence uh, which has been uh, the placed on Japan, uh, which uh, that has been accumulated by our forefathers' uh, endeavors. Uh, we need uh, to have the three resolve, a resolve to protect the universal values, resolve to protect the peace and stability of Japan, and a resolve to contribute to the mankind and lead the international community. We need to have these three resolves in deploying our diplomacy more concretely uh, the Japan-U.S. alliance is the cornerstone uh, for Japan's uh, foreign and security uh, situation. We need to deepen uh, the alliance to try to strengthen the deterrence as well as the response power. Uh, these are uh, the important uh, uh, the endeavors. And we uh, will uh, to be uh, strongly uh, continuing uh, to promote endeavors to realize the free and open Indo-Pacific. And based upon the fundamental values uh, and the principles uh, based upon uh, the rule of all law and so forth, in building free and open uh, the order had to be created, uh, the, way, uh, the will had to be strengthening our partnership with the United States, Australia, India, ASEAN, and Europe, and try to lead the international community. As to our relationship with uh, the neighboring countries, uh, we will squarely and resolutely uh, try uh, to uh, face uh, the difficult issues and try uh, to, to build a stable relationship. Uh, we uh, they will firmly uh, respond uh, to the abduction, nuclear and missile uh, and other pending issues uh, with North Korea. And the rules making, uh, which would be more appropriate for uh, the new era, and the building uh, the international order. And also, uh, in addition to the economic uh, diplomacy, uh, we had the will had to try to enhance the presence of Japan in the international community uh, by exercising leadership for global issues, including global change, climate change, uh, the COVID-19, as well as disarmament and non-proliferation. Uh, with a foundation of all of the, uh, the results that we have accumulated so far on the diplomacy, uh, and uh, to build uh, uh, the relationship trust with all the foreign ministers of the other countries who would like to open the frontier for the Japanese diplomacy. Uh, so please ask uh, the question and come into the microphone, please. My name is Egara of Asahi Shimbu newspaper. Thank you for this opportunity. Minister, you are also the chairman of the Japan Chair Friendship Parliamentary Union. You've also visited various, uh, on various occasions, you visited China, you had met the leaders of China, but now, Within the party, there are some people who are weary of your position within the LDP. So what are your thoughts on this particular matter? And also, China is rising military, in the military capacity. But you also have strong, we also have strong uh, relations uh, economically with China. So how do you intend to address China in this regard? Thank you very much as far as Japan-Japan relationship is concerned. This is very important, not, not only for Japan and China per se, but also it is also very important for peace and prosperity of the region as well as for the international community. And as the Prime Minister has mentioned, Japan will, of course, resolutely put forward its position vis-a-vis -vis China. It will also seek China to take responsible actions. At the same time, we will continue, there's a need to continue to maintain dialogue 
and cooperate in addressing common issues. As Prime Minister Kishida mentioned during the recent phone talks between Japan and China, it is important that constructive and stable relations be constructed between Japan and China. Now, you pointed out the Japan-China Friendship Parliamentary Union in the implementation of my job as the Minister of Foreign Affairs in order to avoid any undue misconception, I have decided to resign from the chairmanship of the Japan-China Friendship Parliamentary Union. Thank you. Next question, please. Aoki-san, please. This is Aoki from NHK. I would like to ask a follow-up question. You mentioned that to avoid unnecessary misunderstanding, what kind of concrete misunderstanding? What are the reasons why you will be quitting the chairmanship, please? As I have already stated and asked the question that I have been asking, of course, there has been various reports indirectly that have been made in order to avoid such misunderstandings, I have decided to quit from the chairmanship. Next question, please. My name is Lee from Hong Kong Phoenix TV. I would like to ask a related question. The concrete policy of the Kishida government vis-a-vis -vis China is not yet clear. You talked about building a constructive and stable relationship. Can you specify more specifically what you mean by that? And also, Next year, you'll be celebrating 50th anniversary of the normalization of ties between Japan and China. How does Japan intend to pursue its relationship with China going forward? And also, what about the visit by uh, State Secretary uh, Mr. Xi Jinping? Well, as you know, China is already the second largest economic power uh, in the world. And so, therefore, its actions has had the influence of its actions is increasing in the international community. It is important that China follow the rules of the international community and fulfill its responsibility and respond to the expectations of the international community. So, as I mentioned earlier, with regard to Japan and China relationship, this relationship is important not only just for Japan and China per se, but it is also very important for the peace and prosperity of the region as well as the international community. So that is the recognition which we have. So that being the case, as far as Japan is concerned, we will continue to put forward our position in a resolute manner to China. It will seek China to take responsible actions. So that is what we will be doing. At the same time, we will continue with our dialogue, and there is need to cooperate on common challenges and issues. That, I believe, is the basic thinking. And what about the visit of uh, Mr. Xi Jinping? As far as the visit of Mr. Xi Jinping to Japan is concerned, we need to continue to scrutinize the situation inclusive of uh, the COVID-19 situation. So therefore, at this moment, we are not yet at a stage where we can actually make concrete coordinations about the schedule. Thank you. Uh, another question? Sugimoto-san, please. Sugimoto from Sankei Shinbun. A related question on China. Before you were appointed to be the minister, you said that you are a sort of the well-versed on China. So what is different between the Wichuha and the Chichuha? Could you be more specific? Uh, if you could uh, give us uh, the explanation for what each, what are the advantages and disadvantages uh, of both, please? Yes, I believe uh, that is based upon what I have stated at the television program as uh, one parliamentarian and not from uh, the position of uh, the foreign minister. This is what I would like to mention as a disclaimer, first of all. And because this is to do with the wording, of course, there could be different uh, uh, the uh, definitions. And uh, to uh, the China, uh, we need to resolutely assert what we need to say uh, to China. And we should ask uh, China uh, to take uh, responsible actions and behavior. That is what I have stated, be it uh, uh, a, uh, a 
uh, the person who is uh, well versed on China. I believe we can do that. And at the same time, through dialogue, uh, we will cooperate with China on various issues. Rather than a person who does not know anything about China, a person who is well versed on China, I believe I would be more appropriate person. So in any case, this is to do with the wording definition. Thank you. Abe from Yomi Dishimbu newspaper. I would like to ask about 2 plus 2, if I may. In March, it was held, and I believe that another meeting will be held toward the end of this year. Minister, what policy would you like to follow in addressing uh, the 2 plus 2? And also, can you share with us the current situation in terms of coordination? You, you, you asked about the coordination of 2 plus 2. As far as the concrete schedule for the next 2 plus 2 is concerned, nothing has been decided at this juncture. That is the situation. And also, at, at the March 2 plus 2, we confirmed strengthening of deterrence and the response power of Japan-U.S. alliance. We also talked about the deepening of defense cooperation between the two countries. So we have active and vigorous discussions between the foreign and the defense authorities of Japan and U.S. going forward and confirm the, uh, and to confirm the outcome of those discussions. Thank you. Yes, Hata, please. Um, my name is E. Hata from OITM, Hata Korea. Uh, on comfort, uh, the women issues and other pending issues, uh, the government has always said that it should not that let the as is, but uh, you're asking Korea uh, to respond. For the government of Japan, uh, you have not made any efforts, but what would you be doing going forward? This is my question. And also, government of Japan, uh, you are asking for acceptable solution to the matter, but what are uh, the concrete conditions, please? Yes, on uh, Japan, uh, Republic of Korea relationship, including the dialogue uh, on North Korea. For the regional issues, Japan are OK, and Japan, US, and are OK. The partnership uh, are crucial in bringing solutions. And having said all this, a Japan are OK relationship because of the former civilian the workers from Korean Peninsula, as well as the so-called comfort women issues. Uh, we are in a very stressed and difficult uh, situation, but I don't think we can let uh, the situation as is. Now, uh, to, uh, to try uh, to, uh, to, uh, to to make uh, uh, the promise uh, true for uh, the promise and commitment made uh, between uh, the, the states that is uh, the, the very basis for uh, the relationship between uh, the states. So, so we would like to strongly ask uh, ROK to take uh, the appropriate response. That is the consistent position of Japan. As for the former civilian workers from no uh, Korean Peninsula, uh, we are asking the ROK uh, to uh, to indicate to us as early as possible the acceptable uh, solution. As for uh, the ruling on uh, the comfort to women, uh, the, uh, the lawsuit, we will be strongly asking uh, the ROK to take appropriate measures as a state. Next question, please. Ms. Higuchi from Chugok Shimbun newspaper. In the asset, you talked about nuclear disarmament. You shared your resolution toward that. Mr. Matsuno, the Chief Cabinet Secretary's press conference t talked about the non-first use of nuclear weapons. He was not very forthcoming about the use of no first use of nuclear weapons. When this was studied under the Obama administration, it was, it's been told that the Minister of Foreign Affairs was, was not very favorable about this matter. So, Minister, can you, thought, can you share with us your thoughts about the no first use of nuclear weapons? This probably relates to the issue of deterrence. But in the in places in the regions which have experienced the a bomb, they believe that this, there is meaning to this. What are your thoughts? Well, between Japan and the United States on a day in day basis, they've, we have had very close and very broad exchange of views about various matters related to security and defense cooperation. But as far as the substance of these exchanges and as far as the details of these responses are concerned, this will directly be re relevant to Japan's security. And also, we have to consider our relationship with other parties. I'm afraid we will not be, I will not be able to share with you the specifics at this juncture. 
as far as the so-called new first use of nuclear weapons uh, declaration is concerned. And I will talk only in generality here. Un unless all nuclear states carry out activities in a manner which is for in a manner which is amenable to verification, then it will not be meaningful. Under the current security environment, it would be difficult to fully implement Japan's security based on the no first use of nuclear weapons against the intentions of the parties concerned without any way of the verification. That is our thought. Thank you. Next question. Uh, is Seon from Rengo News. Now, as to the relationship between ROK and Japan, I have a question. In 2019, February, uh, during the Abe administration, between the two countries, no official summit meeting was held. But for the foreign policy authorities, communication was not that smooth. As foreign minister, vis-a-vis -vis ROK, would you be pursuing communication? How would you be pursuing communication with ROK at the higher level? Yes, earlier there was a similar question being asked, and I have already uh, answered, uh, as for Japan ROK relationship in general, that ROK is an important neighbor for Japan. So we cannot but let the situation as is as to the bilateral relationship, which is in a very uh, difficult and tense situation right now, as I have already stated, and if I may repeat once again, uh, to adhere uh, to the promise and commitment made uh, between uh, the states is the very uh, basis for the relationship uh, between the states. As for the difficult issues between Japan and ROK, I believe that we need to have ROK to take uh, appropriate response. We need to bring our bilateral relationship to a healthier situation and so that uh, we will be able to have cooperation on a broader the basis. We would like to accelerate the consultations uh, between uh, the, uh, the diplomatic authorities. Next question, please. Furuta-san, please. Please go ahead. My name is Furuta from Hokkaido Shimbun. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I want to ask about the Northern Territories. The, the average age of the former residents are now 86. They are eight, so there's the aging issue, and there's a rising call to resolve this issue as soon as possible. So what policy would you like to engage in negotiations to sign the peace treaty and also to address this issue? And also, Minister, if you have any, if you can you talk about your relationship with Russia over the years as well? I think there is no position, there is no change in our position, rather, of placing, attaching importance to relations between Japan and Russia. It is important that that Japan and Russia relationship needs be developed in a manner which will be amenable for national interests of Japan in broad ranging areas such as politics, economy, and culture, as, and as well as uh, signing of the peace treaty. As far as the peace treaty with Russia is, is concerned, we should not defer this issue to the, following, to the next generations. And uh, the policy is to sign a peace treaty resolving the territorial issue, inclusive of the agreement uh, reached in Singapore back in 2018. There are, a lot of, uh, there are many agreements which have been reached between the two countries, and we would like to address this matter in a robust way in a robust manner. Now, as far as Russia is concerned, when I was the Minister of Agriculture, Forestry, and Fishery, I had the chance to meet with my counterpart visiting Russia. Well, actually, I had that plan, but immediately before that, because of diplomatic issues, I was not able to visit Russia at the end of the day. But I had the chance to meet with some Russian parties when they visited Japan. Next question, please. Sawai Sang. Uh, this is Sawai from TV Asahi. As for the human rights diplomacy, I have a question. Under uh, the Kishida uh, uh, government, uh, for the first time, uh, the 
Special Advisor to the Prime Minister in charge of uh, the Human Rights has been established, Mr. Takana Tani, who has been appointed. Uh, and uh, there has been uh, the heightened interest over the human rights uh, because of uh, the many issues that are happening in the different countries. So Mr. Takana Tani, who had the bipartisan uh, parliamentarians at the League on Human Rights, and he had has been discussing uh, that mechanism necessary to pinpoint uh, uh, the sanctions uh, to the individuals as well as the groups. And he was asked uh, the question of the Japanese version of Magnits Magnitsky Act, and uh, he replied that uh, he would uh, uh, be consulting and considering uh, the, what uh, they may be able to do. Do you think that it could be an option for our diplomatic endeavors in the future? As for human rights issue in the international community, uh, uh, the uh, liberty here and uh, uh, the basic human rights are to be respected and rule of law. These are the universal values uh, need uh, to be assured for any region and any head country that is very important. And based upon such a position uh, for a serious violation of human rights, we need to firmly raise our voice against uh, such acts and uh, toward, with a country who are making efforts towards democratization and respecting human rights based upon uh, dialogue and cooperation. Uh, we will be having bilateral dialogue and cooperation to be accumulated and try to encourage them uh, to make voluntary efforts. As for uh, the business activities, a human rights issue to do with business activities, we should also focus our attention on uh, such uh, matters. And the Japan, uh, we would like to have a human rights diplomacy, which is uh, worthy and appropriate for Japan. As for your question that Mr. Nakatani was appointed to be the special advisor to the prime minister, under the Kishida government, uh, we are placing emphasis on protecting universal values. So uh, Mr. Nakatani, as a special advisor to the prime minister in charge of human rights, have been appointed. And this is part of uh, uh, the, uh, the policy and having a cross-ministerial horizontal endeavors to be made. Uh, we uh, will be working closely with Mr. Nakatani, the special advisor uh, on human rights going forward. Next question, please. Judah from IWA. Thank you very much. I would like to talk about that kind of block between Europe, Europe and Asia, uh, Japan, a uh, correction, Japan and Asia. On 11, 11, on the 2nd of November, RCEP went into effect. And nine countries that will take effect from the 2022. And also with the TPP 11, which has been led by Japan in June, UK will be joining. And also China has been making requests for joining since September this year, when RCEP takes fully into effect. That you have an enormous trading block and defense block, which will encompass, encompass both the democratic nations and autocratic nations. On the other hand, you have this the security block centered on Japan, free and, free and, free and open in the Pacific. You have the Quad. You saw the Five Eyes, who, who belong to this block. And, Japan, and uh, France and Germany, they're now sending ships to the, to the Pacific, and they're engaged in joint exercises in this region. So you have the economic block centered on China, and you have this US-centered security block. These blocks are not identical. They are not, they did not go inside. What path of Japan will be following between these two different blocks? I would appreciate your thoughts. Thank you. Well, US-Japan alliance, as I mentioned earlier, this is the linchpin of the foreign policy and diplomacy of Japan and the Indo-Pacific. And the, this is also the basis of the peace and, re, peace and prosperity of this region. There's also the DPRK, there's also nuclear development, nuclear arms development by DPRK, and also unilateral uh, and efforts to you know, change the status quo. So there is increasing demand for freedom here in Japan. As you pointed out, on top of the US-Japan alliance, we have the Quad. And also, Japan, although was not was not a former member of that, is now a member of the ANCAS. Now, on the other hand, as you pointed out, China is now the second largest economic power. And indeed, in various fronts, their actions and the impact of their actions are becoming quite uh, large. 
So that being the case, it's important that China follow the international rules and fulfill its responsibilities and respond to the expectations of the international community. I believe that is quite important. As far as RCEP is concerned, as was pointed out, yes, an agreement was reached. So therefore, we welcome RCEP. And also, based on the thinking that I just alluded to, respective countries need to fulfill, fulfill its responsibilities. That, I believe, is important. Next question, please. The person over there. Uh, my name is Kim from Sekai Nippo uh, ROK. The ROK government uh, uh, is uh, studying and considering to join the TPP, the CPTPP. So ROK is possible joining the CPTPP. What is the position of Japan? There are historical issues and pending issues between ROK and Japan. Do you think that those would be obstacles? And Mr. Motegi uh, have not uh, had admitted with uh, uh, the uh, the ROK, uh, the, uh, the persons, but uh, do you have a plan to meet with uh, the foreign minister as well as ambassador of ROK? First of all, on TPP and CPTPP, China, Taiwan, and UK had been applying uh, to join the CPTPP. That is what I am aware, of, but I do not know yet whether ROK is applying or not. So I would like uh, to, uh, to make research on such information. As for the ambassador from ROK, since I was appointed uh, uh, just now, so I don't have any plans to meet with him. So Mr. Azahari, please. Honorary news, congratulations first on your Thank you. post. Uh, my question is about the Middle East. Uh, what's the main drive for Japan's diplomacy in and what's the main drive for Japan's diplomacy in other parts of the world uh, than East Asia and the United States, uh, namely toward the Middle East and Africa? In the Middle East, uh, it uh, lies, the, it's a crucial source of Japan's energy security, and there are many wars uh, raging all the time. So do you have a new drive toward that area in the new diplomacy of the government of Kishida-san? Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, answering in Japanese. So that other people might. Well, Japan depends 90% of imports of oil to the Middle East. So therefore, peace and stability in the Middle East is naturally quite crucial from the standpoint of energy security. And also, stable supply of oil from the Middle East is essential for the stability of the growth, not only for Japan, but also for the global economy as well. Now, as far as the Middle East is concerned, inclusive of the Afghanistan situation, the situation pertaining to Israel and Palestine, there are some, there are, there continues to be uncertainty and tensions in this region. So, therefore, we are closely monitoring the situation pertaining to the nuclear deal with Iran, the JCPOA, as well as the recent rise in the oil prices. So, we are closely monitoring the situation in this region. Now, as far as the recent rise in oil, oil prices are concerned, we will cooperate with the relevant ministries and agencies. We will cooperate with relevant international organizations. And we're approaching various oil producing countries, inclusive of the Middle East, to continue to expand their production. And we're strengthening our in initiatives toward the, sta toward the stabilization of the energy market. Japan is an ally of the United States. At the same time, though, we maintain very good and positive relationship with the countries in the Middle East region. So we would like to leverage such relationship. It will work toward, de toward relaxation of the tensions in the Middle East and also, also toward uh, stabiliz stabilization of the situation. And we are approaching various, we are making various approaches to various countries through, through various means. We intend to actively carry out our diplomatic activities. Thank you very much. Any other question? Yes, this will be the last question. Miki from Nihon Keizai Shimbun. On national security strategy, uh, the review on this, uh, Kishi, Prime Minister Kishida has said uh, that uh, the review will be made on national uh, security strategy, which will be the basis for the uh, 
uh, defense as well as uh, security uh, the matters as a foreign minister. How, how would you, you address this question? Sorry for keeping you waiting. On national security strategy, in 2013, for the first time uh, in Japan, the national security strategy has been formulated. And it's been seven and a half years since then. And uh, during that time, uh, the balance of power in the world uh, that has changed dramatically in the world, especially in the surrounding areas, uh, there has been accelerated uh, uh, the, uh, the military capability increase, and also there are new threats uh, increasing, such as cyber and space. So the security environment surrounding Japan has undergone a sea change. And against this backdrop, democracy and other universal values and uh, the peace and stability of Japan need to be protected, and we need to lead the international community, and that is very important. So in that regard, a free and open Indo-Pacific concept needs to be strongly being advanced, and also for the maritime security capability, and also the missile defense, including the effective HADA measures, need to be strengthened, defense capability, and also economic security issues, which are the new issues at hand. We need to be resolutely uh, the grappling with all these issues. So from that the point of view, the Prime Minister has instructed to make a review on national s uh, security, his strategy, and others, and the relevant uh, the ministers are uh, consulting with each other. As for foreign ministry, we would like uh, to work closely with the other relevant industries going forward. And it is time for us to end the conference. Thank you.